fraction type, or I can just hit the fraction button right here, and I have one, hit down to get to the bottom, and I need subscript, A1, spacebar to get out of subscript, spacebar to get out of fraction, and we do the same thing again. Now you can find keyboard shortcuts for almost every single one of these things that I just showed you. And we need our dots again. Okay, spacebar to get out of subscript. Spacebar to get out of fraction, and spacebar to get out of the math object. Okay. So, now I'm going to show you some other handy shortcuts inside of Lix. Okay, I have another math object. Control M to go to the math mode. Okay, so now I need some parentheses. You could just type parentheses, and these parentheses will not expand to bigger objects inside of them. Instead, if you need bigger parentheses, you go down here to your to your math panels on the bottom. And where is it? I believe this is it. Okay, yeah, that is it. You would, you just insert these parentheses found right here on the math panel. And these will expand to bigger objects inside of the parentheses. So now we need a fraction. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some different ways to enter things. So like before we were hitting this to go to fraction, okay? Another thing that Lix will do is it will take latex commands and automatically turn them into their output right in the interface. So like I said, backspace, or sorry, backslash frac. gave us a fraction. If we hit backslash, backslash frac and then hit spacebar, we're in a fraction right now. And another way to get to subscript is to hit Alt-M. Now you see this list of things down on the bottom. Down at the bottom of the screen you see all the options. The first one, F, is for fraction and X is for subscript. So. I hit X and I'm in subscript. There you go. There's another shortcut so you don't have to always click around. All right, now I need a multiplication dot, center dot. Good luck finding that, right? There it is, center dot. Another way to do that, we can see that it's popped up the uh, latex command name since I'm hovering over it right there. Next time I need to find it, I could just type backslash center dot. Now I need another fraction, so I can type backslash frac, spacebar, and I have another fraction. Alt M. Whoops. Hit Alt M and then X to get to subscript and spacebar to get out. All right, now this is gonna get pretty lengthy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up this one little item here, and then show you any more advanced stuff. And for an exponent, we can either go right here and click exponent, or we can hit Alt M E for exponent. And we have the one over N, so we need a fraction. One over N. And spacebar to get out of our object. Okay. Less than equal sign you can find right here. As well as many other inequality types.
Now, if you're looking for a symbol, for example, uh, the symbols for the integers, natural numbers, real numbers, those are all right here with the Greek letters, as well as the rest of the Greek letters right here, lowercase. All of your arrows. So this is this is pretty similar to the equation editor. Not too hard to get around there. Now, this could get pretty lengthy, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this right here. You can keep typing this tutorial that I've provided if you'd like, just for some experience. If you have any questions on any different commands or anything, you can leave comments on the video right here, and I'll get back to you. But I'm going to go ahead and um, show you something a little bit more advanced here. I'm going to start a second problem. And I'm going to go back to Mediafire and download Latex Tutorial PDF 2. Okay. Here in this PDF, you can see that we have got a case-wise or a piece-wise function defined here. Now, this is a little bit more advanced. I mean, I'm sure you could do this in math type or equation editor. But I'm going to show you how to do it inside of Lix so that you don't get stuck in the future with these types of things. So I'm going to type up the second problem here. Okay, so typing text in Lix is just like typing text in Microsoft Word. So I just went ahead and skipped through to where I had the entire problem typed out. Now we go down to the proof section. Okay. Okay, here's a different type of, of math object that we want to insert. Instead of inserting an inline, like we did before, we want to insert math inline. We want to display. This is going to center the object like this one is centered right here. You see how it's centered? It's got its own line and everything. That's a display type object. So 